I'm on a journey to get better and I want to do it with you. And I'm not just focusing on physical health. I'm focusing on everything, emotional wellness, spirituality, finances, relationships, and so much more. Every week, it will be my personal goal to bring us, the world's leading healers, experts, and game changers to share groundbreaking secrets and tips to getting better in all areas of life. Getting better isn't easy, but it's a whole lot easier when we can do it together. Welcome to Better Together with me, Maria Menounos. Hello, hello, everybody. Happy Monday. Am I sounding fritzy, Steven? No, you sound perfect on my end. Oh, perfect. I had to like hold my little mic thing to try to get it to not be fritzy. Because in my ear, it's fritzy. But happy Monday. It's May 11th. Holy moly. Uh, our quote of the day, when it is dark enough, you can see the stars. Ralph Waldo Emerson. Jeff Graham in the office. Stephen Lemieux in the booth. Stephen, you and Kevin put in a long day updating this uh, studio so that we can properly see our guests on Zoom. Thank you for your incredible effort. And, and Kevin upgraded the beauty of our studio as well as now we're starting to do some fun little kitchen segments in here rather than taking my Zoom camera and going into my kitchen. We're just doing it in our studio. So it's been kind of fun. Did you guys have uh, a nice Mother's Day? Did you figure out a way to celebrate your moms from a distance? Always totally. celebrate my mom from a distance. What did you do? Uh, I called her. Okay. That's it. That was it? That was it. Okay. So we had sent some tulips, which is good. And again, uh, this is part of the great thing about being married is just I feel like I've leveled up my like gift game and just like being a good son game because my wife is, you know, better than I am in all areas. <laughs> okay. Um, but it was great. Honestly, I feel like for my mom, what she wants most is like a great long phone conversation just to catch up. So we talked to her and she's doing well, you know, my parents, all things considered, are um, they're holding up. I feel like the one thing that's been hard is, you know, they don't get to see their grandkids right now or really anyone. Mm -hmm. um, but it was a good Mother's Day overall. We have a lot to be grateful for. Yeah, my cousins um, had a baby and my aunt and uncle were telling my parents this weekend how sad it is because they can't really see the baby. It's like, hi, look at the baby from 20 feet away. And so I was reading an article this weekend in some online paper about how difficult it is for new moms in every way. Um, you don't have the help that you're, you know, kind of counting on when you embark on that whole, I'm going to be a mom journey. And you think, oh, my friends or my mom or my dad or whoever it is in your life is going to support you and help you will be there. And then now they can't be there. So, um, it's tough. It's tough for grandparents to not have those moments with, you know, their grandkids as well. It's sad. Definitely. It's, uh, it's, I mean, this is real. I feel like, I know it's been two months, but everyone sort of has their moment where they're like, wow, I'm feeling the weight of this global pandemic. And I feel like a little bit this weekend, Laura and I were like, wow, like this is, we are in the history books right now. Like this is, this is happening. I know. I know. You know, it happened for me like a week ago or so um, when it started hitting me and, and, you know, it's, it's just, there's so much uncertainty, um, which I'm hoping our guest today, Rose Theodora, who is a celebrated astrologer will um, shed some light on and help us with, because um, I really, I really do love astrology. And I think it's, um, I think it's been pretty accurate in my life when I have, um, you know, what, how would I say played with it a little bit or dabbled dabbled um I did a little birthday weekend at my house and Rose Theodora came and she did readings for all of us and um and I was just blown away at you know when someone tells you who you are that doesn't know who you are based on your astrology based on the time you were born and the place you were born you're like whoa and even you know can give you aha moments about yourself that you hadn't really kind of realized or come to terms with. So that's kind of how I felt when I did my first session with Rose. Um, it was pretty interesting. Um, I'm sure you guys saw on my Insta stories that I took our guest from, I think it was like over a week ago, we had Edward Parati, the celebrity 
um, event planner on the show, and he gave me an idea to honor my mom's lineage with frames on Mother's Day. So to have my mom's mom, her mom, the other mom, well, I did my twist on it. And so uh, I knew I was going to start the day with um, some masks and do like a little spa thing with my mom. And then I did her hair and makeup and made her beautiful and put on a nice outfit for her and, um, you know, like her super nice sweats. And then um, I had set up the night before, I was starting to prep for my French toast making because I wanted it to be a little easier. It's a lot of work to like entertain. And, um, and so I had set everything up and then I realized, well, where are we going to eat this meal? And so I looked at my dining room and I said, wow, I never see you dining room. <laughs> we have you, we never use you. So I decided to set the table. Meanwhile, I haven't set a table in years. I think the last time we used our dining room for a meal was when I started my new deal at E. I had my boss and his wife over for dinner. And that was probably like six years ago or seven years ago. That was the last meal we had in our dining room. Really? Oh, for sure. I remember having Christmas and thank I remember having Christmas dinner in there one year. Years before that. Was that was before that? Oh, hell yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think after Buzz, right when I started was when you got your deal at E. And I've been with the company for half a decade now. So. Oh, my God. It's I'm crazy. coming on eight, eight years. I yeah. Think. I'm turning 30 in less than a month. Mm -hmm. And I started here when I, I started with AfterBuzz when I was 22. Crazy. Yeah. Yeah. I used to use the dining room and I would like rent big, long tables and make, you know, Thanksgiving in there. And just it became obsolete, especially when we redid our kitchen and we have the outdoor table. And so now we have all that space that we use and i think i told you guys at some point i'm gonna just you know ditch everything and make it into my office because it's a it's an unused room but we did use it for mother's day brunch i had set it all up i kind of like you know it, it if if somebody really took like a close look at like my plateware and my you know things they would be like oh how does that that doesn't go but from far away it looked really pretty <laughs> i thought it looked great I mean, it looked, uh, it looked really pretty, but it wasn't like, you know, how interest or any of those people would set those up. But, um, but my mom was so surprised that she hadn't seen it. And, um, you know, we were just like kind of filming it all. And so I, I set that up. So we had like a nice brunch location. I made the fresh French toast. And then I last minute in the morning, I woke up and I thought about the frames and I was like, oh, okay. I'm going to go grab frames and put them on the table. So I put in front of my mom's seat, I put a picture of her mom. In front of my dad, I put my dad's mom. And then in front of Kevin, wow. I put his mom so that we could celebrate all of our moms. And you guys, it got so emotional. So I said, then I took it up another notch and I said, okay, guys, you know, as we we're eating our French toast, I said, why don't we go around the room and share a story or a memory that um, we want to honor our moms with? And so I started and I talked about how my mom sacrificed any free time she could have had to drive me to modeling gigs and things like that to help me pursue my dream. And... Um, you know, how she protected me. She was such a hawk. She knew like if I went in on, all right, one example was I went in on audition, hit talk. I went in on an audition and uh, it was for this commercial for a big department store. I won't name it. And, um, and I was supposed to be in like a bikini. It was like a spring summer sale. And the, guy, the camera, the director, the photographer was like, oh, you can just change right here. I'll leave. And my mom looks at the camera. She sees the red light was on. Oh, I hate that. And she goes, we're out of here. And so anyhow, um, you know, people are going to try whatever they can because they're scum. And so my mom always protected me anyway. So I shared my story. Then we go to my dad. I mean, to my mom. And my mom started just sharing about how my mom, her mom was just the nicest person ever, which I had the privilege of getting to know my grandmother. She came to visit um, two times from Greece and I was scotch taped to her side. I was 13 and literally 
I was not only scotch taped, I was Velcroed. I was in a street jacket with her. I was so glued to this woman. She was like the greatest person ever. And so I was like, I second that and we're all getting emotional. And then we get to my dad and my dad just starts wailing, wailing about his mom and how, you know, how much he lo- she loved him and how guilty he felt about certain things like, you know, that he, you know, she, she passed away alone in the village and, and, you know, all these things that like had been pent up inside of him. So now like we're all hysterically crying and I'm like, dad, you were like 22 and you built them a house. Like you built your mom a house. Like nobody else did that. You did that. And so it was, it was really special and it was cathartic. And then we got to Kevin. I thought Kevin was going to be comic relief. So I, I FaceTimed in his mom so she could have that moment too. And he talked about how she, you know, gave him a camera to make movies when he was like six or seven and encouraged his filmmaking and his writing. And, and you could tell his mom is like a very tough woman. Um, but you could tell she really enjoyed it because she normally would have, she started to crack jokes at the top. And then when he started saying it and he was serious, she, you could tell she took it in. It was really moved by it. So it was very moving mother's day brunch at our house. That's awesome. Yeah. I like that a lot. It was, um, it was really cool. It was really cool. I feel like it's so interesting that like some families are very sentimental on mother's days and, and different holidays. And some families are just completely not like, but it's different too. in the dynamics, like I'm, I'm not used to people not having a close relationship with their grandmother. Like my grandmother, on my mom's side, I saw every year we had such a close relationship. So when she passed, it was like a really big thing for me. Um, but then like with uh, like friends that don't have that relationship, it's, it's kind of alien to me. It's just like people who don't have good relationships with their siblings. So my family, we never did much for Mother's Day. It was, all right, let's have breakfast together. Let's make mom breakfast in bed. But we never like went through those sentimental things. And I kind of feel like we've missed out on not having traditions or or rituals that we do every every year. Yeah, I don't think that there should be a pressure. But like because I've never done that. I mean, we've either taken my mom out or if I'm not in the state or in the same place as her, I'll send her flowers. So I had sent her flowers as well and um, and and stuff. So and I had like a little gift for her and everything. But you know, we do it differently every time. My dad did crack a joke at the table. He goes, you know, for Mother's Day, everybody, they do so many things. For Father's Day, nobody does anything. And Kevin goes, no, 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 they give you a hammer. He goes, <laughs> yeah, they give me a drill. <laughs> <laughs> so true. And so I'm probably going to do the same thing for Father's Day, um, maybe a different way. But, yeah, I think, you know, you do what you can. And when you're inspired and Edward... You know, on this show, this is why I love this show. You, when you know better, you get better. He gave me an idea. I took it. I made it my own, and um, he inspired me to do something special that was meaningful. And I do, I do try to do meaningful things, like for birthdays or whatever. Um, you know, and and sometimes I get tapped out. Like I've I've surprised my parents with a home. I've surprised my parents with a new car. I've surprised. You know, I've done so many different things along the way that sometimes it's hard to top things. You know, mm-hmm. you need new inspiration and stuff. So, um, you know, I never got to meet my dad's mom. And I'm, you know, I get so sad when I, you know, hear his, you know, his story. She's, I mean, I come from tough, tough means. Like tough. Like oh. walk. 10 miles up the road, both ways, uphill in the snow, kind of. Just like, I mean, my grandmother was like 90 pounds soaking wet, and she would carry a suitcase that was bigger than her and probably weighed 120 pounds. And she'd be like, no, to my dad, I got it. You can't, it's too heavy, you know, and just, you know, the life that they lived in the village was so hard. And, you know, it's just... You just think about your roots and you realize, oh, that's where the toughness just kept getting passed down and passed down. And it's interesting. Yeah, it was a really special day. And I'm I'm really glad that we got to have it. And I don't think if we were in quarantine, it would have been like that. Yeah. Do you think they'd be uh, back in Connecticut? They might have been in Connecticut. 
Um, but even if we were together, maybe we would have gone out because, you know, for my mom, it might be nice to like get a new environment and, and do something. And then it wouldn't have been as special because there's people around and whatever. Um, you know, homemade things always feel so much more special anyway. So, um, but it was really nice. Really nice. I did make the um, lemon buttermilk pancakes that Giada taught us about on Did Thursday. you? Yeah. Weren't they amazing? They were really good. Yeah, I, I did a good job. It's funny, on my first little batch, I forgot the oil. Uh -huh. And I was like, these don't feel fluffy enough. And then I looked and that was the reason. Then the rest of them were like, this big with fluff inside. Oh, wow. Laura was very impressed. I will say this. It is mind-blowing to me. When you have a recipe that's as easy as Giada's lemon buttermilk pancakes, why we use boxed pancakes. Like now I'm kind of like, oh my God, her pancakes were so good and so thick and so delicious. And it really wasn't, a, it wasn't a time saver to do it the other way because you were, you're doing the same amount of work basically. Totally. So yeah. Mm hmm. I think just cooking together is kind of a fun, fun thing to do with your family. Yeah. And l unless so you have the family that you can't like uh, it's like I can't I've I've tried cooking for my family and I can cook for my family. But the moment you try to bring them into like, let's all cook together. It is a nightmare fest of everyone just yelling. At each yeah. other. Oh, my God. Well, I. um. Yeah, I'm grateful to this show because I wouldn't have had that idea on my own. And um, and I'm learning every day. So here we go. Let's learn about uh, astrology. Let's see um, what Rose Theodora, a celebrated astrologer, spiritual counselor, curator, has uh, to offer. Because she does have insightful healing readings, in-depth counseling. She hosts international retreats. Uh, where she shares her love and knowledge of astrology and her unique experiences related to the astrological landscape. So let's bring in Rose Theodora live from Spain. How are you? <laughs> I'm okay. How are you? I'm good. Thank you. How are you holding up in Spain? It's interesting. It's, um, it's isolating, but I feel like it's so safe. And I feel like they're taking really um, a lot of precautions to make sure that everyone is like abiding by the law. And it's pretty intense though. It's pretty extreme to mm -hmm. be honest. Like what? Yeah. Like we have curfew. We have certain times that we can go out. Like we cannot, in comparison to the States, we cannot go out at all. Um, yeah. Wow. So we've been, yeah, we've been stuck in the house for two months and slowly as a central government uh they call de-escalation here people are able to go outside uh between certain hours so they're protecting the older people by allowing them to go out during the middle of the day and um anyone under 60 years old cannot go out until 8 p.m until 10 p.m or excuse me until 11. so there are like there are phases that were reopening stuff but it's slow and it's wow. It's definitely intense compared to the States. It's extreme. Yeah. Wow. How long have you lived yeah. in Spain for? <laughs> uh, two years, three years, back and wow. forth. Wow. Wow. And, and, yeah. and you love it? I love it. I love Europe because I love to walk and I just love the, like, the lifestyle so much more. And even before moving here, it fit my lifestyle so much in terms of eating and walking and sleeping and relaxing and meditating during the middle of the day just completely fits my lifestyle compared to LA where you're always driving and you just feel like a little bit spent like any to go anywhere in LA takes so long you know and here yeah. it's just like you get on the bullet train and you're there you can go anywhere you can hop on a flight and go to Paris or whatever well I'm thinking for all of the people who are listening that need a life change not even just <laughs> me I'm just I'm fascinated by you know, the idea of moving, but what do you think the cons are? Like, those are the pros. What could the cons be for anybody who might be in the market for a change? The cons would be the economy is just, it's different. Like in the States, you can do anything. And really, especially in LA and New York, it's like, if you have a dream, you can make it happen here. It's so much more logical and 
you have to really have the education to do something. So people struggle, I think, as far as purpose goes and doing something that's really creative. It's much harder to manifest um, their dreams, I think, in that sense. The other con I would say is that it's so traditional. You know, you can really feel like even in Spain, uh, I didn't grow up Catholic, but certainly Christian, and you can just feel like the heaviness of of Catholicism and thought, and, and it's beautiful on one hand, and on the other hand, it's it's very restrictive to, let's say, younger people who want to explore something or they want to live their life in a different way. They're kind of bound by these, uh, mm. these old traditions, and I think that that's hard for some people, especially the younger generation. Wow. Sure. Yeah. Wow. I would have never expected mm. either of those answers. I think that's so cool. <laughs> um, so before we dive into this, can you give the audience that's watching and listening right now um, kind of a two to three minute primer on astrology so we can catch them up? Yes. So astrology is the cycle of planets and their movements in relationship to Earth. And people forget that always in relationship to earth. So we're bound by gravity and it's a geocentric system. So the planetary movements affect us whether we believe in astrology or not. You don't need to believe in astrology. Um, astrology is the way that we process the planetary changes, whether those are retrogrades, whether the planet is earth is moving past another planet. Astrology is a way to look at our relationship with the universe. And it's not a belief, it's happening. And there's a reason that it's an ancient art and it's existed for so long. You can pretty much pinpoint what anyone has been through in their life just by consulting the planetary arrangements at their time of birth. So that's what astrology is, looking at the arrangement of planets, either now or looking at them in history. You can go back and look at events of the arrangement of the planets and see what do those planets represent and how are they affecting events on Earth and when it comes to an individual's chart, you can see that it really, if you think about the planets as like magnetism, it really aligns to a person's events in their life and their personality. And there's a reason that astrology has existed so long. Does that answer your question a little bit? Yeah. You think that would... Is there science behind astrology as well? All the pseudoscience, but... I really, truly believe we don't have enough evidence yet. It's like science is only um, proven until it's disproven, right? We have a scientific fact until it's disproven. So we don't have enough evidence for astrology yet. And even things like dark matter, which is the majority of the universe, like the scientists can't even define dark matter. So I, to say that astrology is a pseudoscience, kind of, but it's also an art form. And there's such a mathematical way of processing it like you have to be so accurate in the mathematical calculations and for me it, it is a science but i think we will find proof as time goes on but right now people are just like old forms of astrology are coming back and i think people are looking at astrology different it's no longer this psychological way of looking at a person's chart or dumbing it down there's so many more elements history that are starting to come back like astrologers are starting to practice a synthesis now what is that and yeah so ancient astrology is very very it's called mundane astrology and it's really about like looking at the facts and not sugarcoating things so that people feel comfortable not saying it's okay that you're going through a hard time because it, it was happening for your growth you know it takes away people's free will to some extent like we all have free will. We all have the free will to choose how to feel or choose how to think. But there are some things related to astrology that you can see that are kind of like unavoidable. And what about those people who try so hard, they work on themselves and they meditate and they do the best that they can and they still are experiencing things in life that seem out of their will. You know, it brings up questions like fate and destiny. So these ancient forms called Hellenistic astrology or mundane are starting to come back into the Western world of astrology as recently as the 80s. So not many astrologers practice these old forms. Like the way astrology is practiced today is mostly psychological. It has nothing to do with the, the ancient practice of astrology at all. And so it's just completely different you know. But there is a synthesis being practiced now, which I love to see and 
and love to do myself a little bit. So cool. So you had told uh, Jeff that you had an inkling that something like this was going to happen. Will you explain that? Yeah, I think all astrologers did. Um, there was a planetary alignment that happened. And this aspect happens once every 33 years. The last time that it happened in the way that it did with the planetary alignments that happened doesn't happen often at all. Like the last time that they were aligning in a certain sign was uh, like the 17th or the, excuse me, the 16th century. Oh. So astrologers knew that these two planets, Saturn and Pluto were coming together. They don't come together often. So when we see that, like most astrologers in general are like think, are thinking, okay, this is a huge deal. For one, these two don't come together often. And when they do now, they're in the sign of Capricorn. And the sign of Capricorn is about the government. It's about structure, society, economy, and it's on a global level. So when these two planets are coming together, one represents deconstruction and transformation, and the other one represents reorganization and, and like scaling things back and, and revealing the truth and about maturity and responsibility. That's kind of, it's like a warning sign, but also, you know, something good is going to come from it in the long run. So that's one way that we knew something would happen. Um, me personally, I was seeing the arrangements also involving the planet Neptune. And Neptune is about infectious disease and um, has to do with the lungs. And so if you look at since January 12th, all the planetary alignments that have been happening, they relate to different facets of what's been unfolding. Like when things took off in certain countries and when they hit their peak and why this, why Corona has affected the lungs and why it's affected institutions, hospitals, why we're closed down globally, why there's no international travel and why it's so um, life-changing for the economy. So all of these things are certainly there and they're laid out. But I think as an astrologer too, you, you hope that the worst doesn't happen. You hope something negative doesn't happen. You know, you hope it's like a good thing that comes out of it, but you know something is going to happen and something will change related to the government and the world. So it's almost like, like we knew about Y2K, right? Because we're like, oh my gosh, we're changing. You know, it's going to be the year 2000. Right. Something's going to happen. We would never have really paid attention to a planetary alignment change. So you guys were seeing this coming, but you don't know what that really is going to mean specifically. You just know something big is coming. So mm -hmm. what does what does it look like? It's like, when is this planetary alignment going to shift? And, and what do you guys see next? So let's go back in history a little bit. Y2K is a good example because it was 1999 and there's an inversion of what's happening now with the planets. So you've got the planet Saturn in one sign having to do with economy and Uranus was in another sign having to do with the collective and the internet specifically. And these two planets were in a negative, like not a negative, but a, a difficult relationship in 1999 going into 2000. We're in the same planetary configuration now, but the inverse of that. So we know the internet's being affected. We're socially isolated and we know it's going to affect the economy. And this happens every so often, every 20 years, this aspect happens. So there will be these shifts, but it gets very specific as in regards to what sign it's going to be in. Um, that's one way to look at it. Another thing is that in 1982, these two planets, Saturn and Pluto, came together, but they were in a different sign. Them coming together in the same sign doesn't happen often. So when they came together in 1982, there was a theme globally related to relationships and related to the AIDS epidemic. Like it didn't come out in 1982, it had already existed. But relationships, we started looking at relationship dynamics differently. The divorce rates skyrocketed. So these two planets affect us on a collective level and they affect global trends. So this isn't something that's gonna go away right away. The world will never look the same. But relationship dynamics needed to change, right? They couldn't, we couldn't stay in these traditional relationships in 1982. Would you agree? Yeah. 
right? And the economy can't stay the way it's been, especially like things that happen in China affect us in the United States. We can look the other way or, or perhaps we don't even know, but we have a responsibility to look at the planet and the animals and everything that's happening on a global level. Like we cannot look the other way. So that's what this aspect is about. So when it comes together, these two planets, it creates an event. And then there's three phases to each of these alignments. So it's going to slowly unfold. It's not like we're going to be quarantined forever, but this is changing the world. We're going to care more about how things are done, how things are allocated. Who is, is, is the central government have control or do more people have a say? And how are we treating the world? How are we treating animals? We can't consume them in China the way we have. For example, you know, all of these things that have been happening come to a head with these two planetary alignments. So this is something that really should last 33 years, the effects, um, but in a good way. You know, medicine's gonna change the way we deal with healing, the way we treat doctors, the way we're equipped for medical facilities is all going to change. And thank God. It seems very negative right now, but that's what that's how transformation works. It's like even if you are doing inner work on yourself, you kind of have to deal with with your dark side or those shadow sides, right? Of fear. And you overcome them and then you feel better, you feel enlightened, you feel more empowered. And that's what this is about. So okay, but here's okay. here's a specific that I wanna know. Because you know when we're gonna shift out of those planets and and now um, Pluto, was it Pluto and Mars that Saturn. were in Pluto Capricorn? Pluto and Saturn. Pluto and mm -hmm. Saturn. When are they leaving Capricorn? Like when is, when is this all shifting again? So Saturn moves into Aquarius in 2023. Holy shit, so, we can't wait that long. <laughs> no, but it's not, but that's not how it works. Okay. It doesn't, it doesn't say, it's just basically like, here's an event because the, the world is out of balance. So there's a natural homeostasis with the planets. Like even if we're not on earth, the planets are still gonna be revolving around one another. It always works that way. So we're a part of this cycle and it's introducing an issue that's out of balance. It says, okay, this is out of balance. You guys need to get it together, right? And so we're working on problem solving and solution. So this is, we're already like moving towards solution, but it's gonna take a while. People have different opinions. There are different economies all over the world. So we're gonna handle it differently, but you can expect to see a shift after the new year. And then it will slowly resolve for the next year. So realistically, I would say a year and a half. Okay. And what do you see in that shift when you see how the planets are going to be aligning in, in January? What do you see then? There's an eclipse happening. So it's, it's not just those two planets. It's all of the planets and also the eclipses. Mm -hmm. And eclipses are significant because it's an alignment of the sun, the moon, and the earth. And it brings about unexpected events. If you look at history, anytime there's been a solar or lunar eclipse, there's been a major event, a world event that's happened. 9-11 happened on a lunar eclipse. Uh, Princess Diana happened to death on a lunar eclipse. So there's going to be an eclipse on December 20th paired with all the planets moving. So Jupiter and Saturn are going to move into, or Jupiter will move into another sun. And Saturn will move back into Aquarius. So when they move into Aquarius, we're going to see themes that are more collective related to the internet and how we deal with information and how we consume information and what is the truth. And that's how I see that playing out. And oh. then I see us finding solutions. Well, maybe that is connected to the election, right? Because completely a, a new president will be sworn in in the new year. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Huh. Okay. We have, okay, so here's what we have on deck. Um, for those of you who are listening, we have three listeners who are going to get a reading from Rose Theodora. Before we get to that, I'm going to let Stephen ask all of his burning questions. Um, <laughs> I'm also going to remind you guys that um, if you haven't already become a Patreon member, because I forgot to mention this at the top of the show, please join us. Um, we have amazing shows we're doing over there that are just for our Patreon members and um, any support you can uh, give would be greatly appreciated. So join us over there um, and um, rate, comment, subscribe when you have a chance. We love reading your comments. Um, they fuel us. They, they give us life and give me so much joy. I'm so grateful for all of them. Um, Steven, go to your burning questions. 
or at least one of them. Oh man, I have like I have like two or three questions. Okay, we got to be quick. I'll I'll be quick. Um, one of the main ones is I have you you talk about how you know Capricorn is associated with toxol toxicology and like different diseases and things like that. When was this decided? Uranus and, is, I think. Neptune. 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 Oh, Neptune. Shit. So we got it all. Got it wrong. So <laughs> okay. Is this like okay? A bunch of a bunch of people back in the day were just like, all right, that planet. Let's just associate with this, and then moving forward, that just stuck. Or is it like, okay, now that we're in the 20th century, how do we ascribe new technologies to these different signs? How is it decided what is associated with each sign, Ooh, star, great planet? Great question. Yeah, because we didn't have internet. Oh, we didn't have all that good. stuff before. Oh, good. Well, and Neptune is not associated with the internet. So first it happens, it's how they're discovered, how the planets are discovered. And Neptune was discovered when looking for another planet. And so astronomers ascribe meaning based on the conditions of how it was discovered, and then through a lot of observation and a lot of studying. So we've always, as human beings, observed the planets and how they affect humans. And I do think it's a symbiotic relationship. I do not think it's one-sided. And that might be hard for us to grasp or understand, but I truly believe that in balance. So the planet Neptune itself, it's through observation that it, and it's associated with so many different things. It becomes associated with disease in certain arrangements. And as planets are discovered, they're added to the, zod the zodiacal wheel. And so they take on another meaning. So there's a lot of factors to consider. Another one of them is that Neptune is so far from the Earth that it is related to the collective, not a personal planet. So it does not affect us on a personal level. So those of you who are Pisces, listening, Jeff, right? Yeah. Your, your uh, traditional ruling planet is Jupiter. And a lot of contemporary astrologers ascribe meaning to those outer planets when maybe they shouldn't because they are such recent discoveries. So that's yeah. how it's through a lot of observation and testing and the way in which the planet was discovered and then how it's introduced into the zodiacal wheel. So how does distance play a part then? Because if you're going to say that Neptune is so far away that it's not really, you know, making a difference, but then everything else is decided by the stars that are millions of light years away. I'm just like, because what, what, what's always interested me is more the philosophical aspects of astrology versus the scientific, because for science, you need to test against it. So if in your, in your beliefs, like how do we test against astrology in a way that would prove it to not be a pseudoscience? You have to, the more I study it, the freakier astrology becomes. And it's something I've studied my whole life. Have you studied Plato and Aristotle? Yeah. Okay. So if you look at the myth of Ur, do you know the myth of Ur? I'm not aware of the myth of Ur, no. That describes all of astrology, the zodiacal wheel. This is by Plato. So if you go back in history and look at these early observations and how long astrology has been around, it's profound existed since before we can even before we can even prove like the first documented cases of astrology are early babylonia so when i talk about neptune being a faraway planet you have to look at the ecliptic belt first of all how the planets move then when you get to the outer planets you have to take into consideration the asteroid belt which exists between jupiter and mars once you go past the asteroid belt those are considered outer planets and outer planets are too new, in my opinion, to consider interpreting in an individual's chart. I don't think they give good enough information. So to answer your question, I think people need to study, 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 study. You have to go so deep into philosophy and history to understand astrology. Some of your question? Yeah, it, it, makes, it makes sense. I have a, I mean, I have a lot of, um, I'm the skeptic of the show, so I just kind of. Good, I, I welcome it. What sign are you? Uh, I'm a Gemini, technically, I think. Wait, Theodora, we have this, Rose, we have the same birthday. June 8th. Yeah, yeah. me and Maria have the same Yay! birthday. Oh, yeah. I, love I love how you remember. You're so funny. So, like, I love, I love the aspect of testing against it and, and finding what is the science that could prove it. Because, as you said, with dark matter, it's like one of those things that's out there. We know it exists, but we haven't been able to test against it. The thing with astrology mm -hmm. is, is I've, I've, I'd love to see some studies that you've maybe compiled that kind of show data on a large scale, because most of the studies I've seen show that it's completely random. But totally. when you look into, yeah. 
I, go ahead, sorry. No, I, I don't mean to go too long. I just mean like when, when I hear about it and my friends talk about astrology, the one thing that they use as a term that I think is incorrect is gravity. And they, they say that the, the effect from astrology is caused by gravity, but that's proven false. So I'd love to see how like... I've never heard of that. Well, cause it, no, he's, he's right. And, really? and I love what you're saying too, because as an astrologer, I'm a skeptic to, in my own right, even though I'm an astrologer, I have Mercury and Gemini. Gemini's love facts. Gemini's, that's why Maria works in news. It's like Gemini's love to collect facts. You're, you're open, but you want to know. Whereas your opposite Sagittarius is, is about, I had this experience and it's true. So you're the opposite of that. You're like, well, I don't know. <laughs> because I had that experience doesn't mean that it's it's true. So when it comes, notice what I said about gravity. I said that we are bound by gravity to this point. But astrology is not gravity. Astrology, in my opinion, and from studying, is that it's magnetic resonance, which is the way that the planets move together. So it's not gravity. And, and I do think people should be skeptical. I think that the way astrology is practiced today is too based in, on, in psychology. It's too superficial. And it is, it just, it's, it's almost disregarding that fact that I talked about earlier about free will. Like, what is free will? You cannot just feed people, excuse my language, you cannot feed people BS and reassure them. Like, some things are out of our control and it, you have a choice to decide how to feel or how to think about it, right? That is true free will. You know, not all of us would like to lose a parent, but we're going to. How do we deal with that? We need the tools to do that, and there are many. So I love that psychologists are starting to use astrology because astrology can, can basically uh, allow you to see what a person has been through in one second, and it might take years in therapy. So that I think is profound. But there are some elements of astrology and the way it's practiced that I really disagree with. And I, that's why I love and welcome the synthesis of ancient astrology, because I think it's going to really change astrology, those who practice it that way. And I'm excited to see what happens. So I really think you should be skeptical about what you read about astrology. You should study it. You should go way back to things like the myth of Ur and Plato. And just I really encourage you to study uh, its history. I have one last quick question, which is, sure. in, in your opinion, what should people use it for? Um, I, I know Great a lot question, of friends, actually, a lot of friends are like, oh, well, I'm dating a guy. He's a Gemini and I'm going to just dump him because I found out he's a Gemini or uh, <laughs> my no, it's, Sagittarius. It's true. There, there's so much. Uh, sorry. There's so much. Um, what do you call it? People are. What's the word? Discriminating against certain signs. That's it's true. Do you, how should people use it, though? Do you think that's a valid use of it to decide your future no. life partner? No. And I was thinking about this before we even spoke. Compatibility has nothing to do with your sun sign. Nothing. What? Nothing. No way. Everybody nothing. uses it for that. That's so funny. Because people don't know. And, and people are, the public is not educated. And you're, you're being, you know, shorthanded. It's just not healthy. So first of all, in relationship, I want to say that there needs to be conflict. Partnership and relationship is about growth. And it's sometimes about having that person that's your support and your partner. So relation, astrology is so deep in compatibility. Like if you look at what your partner needs on an emotional level, what their communication style is, um, what their wounds are, you know, and how you're triggering them, how you can support them, it gets so deep. So I would say use astrology to know yourself, really study the facets of every aspect in your chart, really get to know the signs and study trends in society, like look at its effects. And, but most of all, I think it's to know yourself and to really heal, because if you understand yourself on such a deep level, you're no longer holding other people responsible your experiences there's that there's not that projection factor that's how i think it should be used so true if you heal you're no longer using other people oh my god and, oh my god that's so so true you're not blaming yeah. everybody else for your right. experience damn i love that i guess um i also want to know 
are there certain signs that are more affected by this global crisis? Um, one other thing I want to add to how it should be used yes. too is to study the cycles. Because if we study the planetary cycles, we can say, okay, yeah, we expected this. How do we deal with it? How should we? I, I really feel people can use it in such an empowering way. How should we um, be using it? What? How should How we be using this? Yeah, for you mean this exact alignment for the future? Mm -hmm. Well, the internet and information are going to be huge themes. And you could say, well, that's logical because, of course, you know, we're in this situation, but no. The way that the planets are moving into Aquarius, there is going to be both good and bad aspects to that. And knowing that, we can manage it. We can say, okay, so maybe one of the representations of Saturn moving in Aquarius with Jupiter could be that, you know, people want to form these communes and cults. And maybe this, maybe this might happen on a big global way, you know, on a global scale. Let's look at that. Ah, that's How so crazy. I literally just told a friend the other day. Now... Forgive me, I don't know exactly, I, I don't know enough history about communes, but I said, I go, I feel like we're going to all build our own little communes, like where we live together, we all work the land, like we, you know, we have our own little system. And they're like, oh yeah, totally. We've been talking about that too. And the fact that you just brought that up is so strange. It's because it's, it's part of the collective. We're all connected. Yeah. I mean, you guys know quantum entanglement and quantum physics. We're all connected and it's neurological and we think we're so separate and everything doesn't affect us, everything affects us. So the fact that you are thinking about communes, a lot of people, you know, are farming. What does farming look like? Why are there these trends about people returning to the earth and wanting to have their farm and moving to these rural areas again? You know, this is all there. It's all a theme. Mm -hmm. And so I think if we can use it in that way and also anticipating with the eclipses over the next eight months, in Gemini and Sagittarius, the eclipses alternate for 18 months, then we know the information is going to be huge. The way information is presented is going to be huge. Uh, news is going to be consumed in a different way. People are going to be more independent. So these are big themes too about what is the truth? How, what can we trust? What information? You know, people are already so skeptical. Mm -hmm. There's a reason that that's reaching a crisis point. Yeah. I'm a journalist and I'm skeptical. I don't know who to trust, who to believe. I feel like yeah. everything, nothing's real anymore. Like right. that is like one of the themes I had a conversation with, with my friend the other day. I was like, like what's real anymore? Other than just us are like flesh and blood right now. Like what is right. real? And is that, is that even going to be real for some people? Bananas. So, Amazing. so what signs are most affected by this pandemic? Right. If, if any at all, I don't know. Yes, always. Because if you look at the collective themes, like the eclipses are going to happen in Sagittarius and Gemini. That means all Sagittarius and Gemini are going to be the most affected over the next 18 months in a positive way, I think. Ooh. Because your, your whole life is going to be aligning to, your, to a higher purpose of what you're here to be and do on Earth. And there will be two other signs affected by the eclipses, which are Pisces and Virgos are going to have a little bit, yes, are going to have a little bit of a difficult time because, for example, um, I'm just thinking of Jeff's chart. So he's going to be thinking about, you know, where does he live and family stuff and how his family affects his role in the world. And he's laughing. It's going to affect them in that way. And related to this Saturn and Pluto conjunction, Capricorn, Capricorns have had a wild year. Um, if we talk to any of them, there's a woman today who has some, some hefty aspects. Oh, um, but basically, Capricorns are very affected. They are having to, they always feel responsible anyway, and now they're feeling this sense of pressure. Like they have to just do something because Capricorns, Tauruses, Virgos are earth signs. They love to plan their life. You cannot plan your life right now. We don't know what's happening. They are feeling so stressed and, and pressured to make decisions. And so we're all affected in different ways. The sign cancer is also affected right now in terms of family and work as well and security financially. And then the sign Taurus is very affected. 
by the planet Uranus. So there are some signs that are more affected by a certain arrangement. Wow. Okay, so here's the deal. Um, okay. Rose Theodora was so gracious to um, allow three of our listeners to be read. Um, we are going to go to that next. Before we go to that, I want to make sure for anybody who doesn't have time to stick around and listen that you know you can find Rose Theodora um, on Instagram at Rose Theodora underscore astrology. We'll put her links to her social on um, uh, in the summary. So if you want to reach out and get a reading, they can do that through there, right? Through your social? Sure. Yes. Okay, thank great. You. Um, and um, yeah, I think let's get to it. So our first guest, um, Jeff, why don't you do the honors and share um, who we chose here? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so our first guest, I'm really excited, especially because I think she could really use some spiritual counseling right now. Um, a listener that I found through the Facebook group, Maria. So if you're yes. not in the Facebook group, make sure you join. Her name is Anna Wait, Hoy. Yeah, say that again because I cut you off. But if you're you fine, yeah, no worries. I was just going to say for all our listeners, this opportunity came through the Facebook group. So make sure you're in there for this kind of cool stuff. Because we, Maria and I were talking yesterday. We do want to engage our audience more as we like really level up the show. And more giveaways. So how do you get involved yeah. in the Facebook group? Um, so all you need to do is go to facebook.com and Steven double check me on this, but it's, um, uh, better together with Maria Menunos. The Facebook group will be the first result and you hit join. There's a couple questions and, um, that's how you get involved. Cool. Really exciting. All right. Um, okay. So, so Anna, Anna is, um, a fellow Greek American, just oh, so yay. you know, Maria. Opa. um, and, uh, in September she opened a travel agency. Um, oh boy. A, that's a tough go, obviously, for her new entrepreneurial journey. Um, so she was just saying, not only as a fan of Maria, but someone who could really use some guidance right now, she loves some help. And um, I know you know nothing more, Rose, besides just her birthday. I don't want to. Time yeah. and location. So Anna, welcome to the show. We're so glad to have you. Hi, good morning. Yes, Kelly Anna. Maria. Nice to see you. Nice, nice to, meet to meet you. you. Thanks for listening to the show. Oh, love the show. Thanks for having me. Of course. All right. So Jeff's out. Let's just keep Anna and Rose Theodora on. Rose, Hi, Rose. you guys take it away. Hi, Hello. So the first, I noticed a couple of things about your chart, and I would like to start with that because I think it might be healing for you. And then if you have questions, feel free to ask if you have a question, okay? Absolutely. So the first thing that you have been experiencing with, I'm not sure if you were listening earlier, but there have been these major planetary alignments of Saturn and Pluto coming together with this yes. whole pandemic and everything. And so where it is happening in your chart has very much affected your home and the physical life, your ancestors. I don't know how many people you have living with you right now. It seems like quite a bit. I do. I have four children, my mother-in-law, my husband. So there is quite a few of us. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah, you can see literally it shows five people in her chart. I can even show it, but. Oh, wow. Four kids and a husband, right? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I can't see if they're kids or your husband, but yeah. <laughs> the other thing that, that I see is, you know, Venus is going to go retrograde uh, on the 13th and it's going to be retrograde for six months. What that means for you is that you're thinking right now about education and belief. Like, do you need to learn more about where you're headed next? Is there a skill that you're wanting to learn? Have you been thinking about that? Yeah, so I'm in the travel industry and mm. I'm sure you can imagine that uh, travel has just completely stopped. And I just started this in September. I started my brand new business. So for me, things were just starting to take off. So I'm trying to pivot. And one of the things I am doing taking this time to train a lot, train on whatever I can absorb at this time so that I could be prepared for when travel returns. Perfect. Do you see me staying in travel as I'm curious about that? <laughs> yeah, the thing is you, so I have another question before I answer that. Do you have a business partner or are you wishing you did? Which one is it? I don't have a business partner. I'm doing this by myself. I did hire a business coach Mm -hmm. And I just recently hired a digital marketing person to help me with my social media. Okay. So I am built kind of building a team. Perfect. And are you having, because you just had what's called a, your Chiron return. You'll be 53 in July, correct? Yes. Thanks for pointing yeah. that out. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. See, I, I'm just not kidding. an ageist. I think age I'm is beautiful. Kidding. That's why. No, no, no. I'm so sorry. I think it's a beautiful I'm totally thing. kidding, Rose. 
So, but, but anyone listening who knows astrology, when I say Chiron return, it happens around 51, 52, 53. And what that means is you're healing like a lot of stuff. Did you feel before with work that you, like there was always something you wanted to do, but didn't have the courage and you were like not for do, doing your fulfilled work. Is this why you are now doing what you're doing? Cause you had the courage during the last year. Yes, absolutely. Okay. So it, this really started a couple of years ago. And then um, I was in a job that I wasn't loving. I wasn't living my passion and I wasn't feeling fulfilled. So I, I went to my manager and I said, you know, I'm not happy. Um, is there anything else I can do here? I have all these skills and gifts and I feel like I'm not growing and, you know, I'm not being challenged. And basically his response was, well, do you want to start looking? And I said, whoa, mm -hmm. that means they don't really care about me. I am doing the wrong thing. Wow. So what I always thought about for years, for three years, I looked into travel business and I just felt like, well, this is my push. And if I don't move now at 52, I'm never going to move. So I just decided just to okay. talk with my husband and I said, I'm going to do this. If I don't do this now, I'm never going to do it. And I just took the leap. And I'm so proud of you. Thank wow. you. That's that incredible. Is this is her Chiron return too. It's so crazy because Chiron is this asteroid in, in astrology that's seen as like a wound. It's like, like kind of what you're describing, Anna, like, I don't know if I can do it, but then your boss pushed you and you said, I didn't feel cared for, which is your Chiron experience of, I have to heal this because if, and maybe you want to share, but I'm sure this has been occurring in your life for a long time leading up to this point, right? Yeah, so I've had weight problems, um, and I've found that really in the last nine or 10 years, it's been a struggle in my career. I, I was in advertising for a long time, and then after I left advertising, I just moved around. I couldn't find the right place. I wasn't having trouble finding jobs, um, and I felt like it had to do with my weight, and I don't have a college degree, so my self-esteem was you know, damaged. And I'm a Gemini like you, Maria. So I'm entrepreneurial and I'm hardworking and I'm very creative. So I was just always trying to problem solve. What can I do? What can I do? And finally, I just made the decision to do this. So I, I jumped in, I bought a franchise and I just started my company, which is Vacations by Anna. And like I said, it was just starting to take off when all of this happened. So that was, a, a you know, another like wound. But I, instead of reacting like I wanted to, which is just like, oh my God, what's going to happen? I just started to figure out what can I do to navigate Amazing. the circumstance. But this is why, oh, Rose, so she's going to be I've successful. This is why you're going to be successful in the end, because you keep shifting from anything negative into a positive, and you're not you're not coming from any kind of victim stance in any way. Like she outgrew it. She completely outgrew it. Yeah, through, it's amazing. Through, through exhaustion. Because yeah. sorry to interrupt you, Maria. I said it with a Spanish accent. But but her <laughs> her her moon is Virgo. So she's been so critical on herself a lot. She grew up with being critical of herself and her body. And and in her mind, like in that she's always been so hard on herself with that Virgo moon. And yes. part of her challenge in your life is to really learn to be proud and have a vision in life that you are so proud of and so proud to create. And that's what your Chiron return is activating for you. It's saying you have to heal the victim consciousness. And Maria, you are exactly pointing it out because that's what she's doing. And there's no looking back. Like you're not ever going to be where you were ever again. And the whole part about the pandemic is just getting you to be very solid about what you want. Like you can overcome any adversity with these planets, me meaning with what you've been through, because I know how much you've been through related to that inner dialogue of criticism. Like it's extreme for you. Yeah. Right. Thank you. Yeah. And I, yeah. I do study astrology a little bit and I, I have heard that next year, my 53rd year is supposed to be, a super abundant year. So in knowing that, I'm also like, well, I need to plan. I need to plan and prepare. And so when everything happened, I thought, okay, this is for me to plan, strategize. This is for me to educate so I can be ready when. See? And she's saying right? life is happening for me, not to yes. me. This pandemic yeah, no is happening right? for me. Damn. Amazing. You you do listen to this show. I do, Maria. <laughs> I love it.
So right. yeah, I'd love to see, um, you know, what you see coming in the next six months. I think you said to the end of the year, you don't see anything changing. So am I doing right. the right things? Is there anything I should be focusing on that I'm not focusing? Right. I love that question. And just for people listening to, no one can tell you what to do or what not to do, right? You know, inside, if something's right for you, you just know it. And then yes. the beautiful thing that I see with astrology is some people do get stuck or it's nice to have a focus, right? To check in, but you know, like you're right on track. And what's going to happen is when Jupiter moves into Aquarius in December is that it's going to move into your fifth house. I'm speaking to you in astrology terms because I know you know, and it's helpful for you. Perfect. When Jupiter moves into your fifth house, you're going to be able to be so much more creative. Like you're so creative and you haven't been able to express that. Like you've been doing the, the you've been laying the groundwork to have the business and putting all the financials in place, but now you get to be creative. So that's what I would focus on is, okay, yes, you know, it's a little scary. I just launched this, but you do have Uranus, newly in Taurus, conjoined your North node in the eighth house. And what that means is you are going to be coming into more money, the more risk you take, because you're learning that you can have a quality life. You're so used to tragedies or like just emotional kind of upheavals, you know, all the time that you're learning you can have a beautiful, calm life. And that is part of this. So over the next six months, that's what's really going to happen for you. Also, the eclipses are happening in your ninth and third house. Continue to learn. Do think about international stuff even more because it is going to push you to go abroad, even though we're not traveling, I don't think, here. But really look at that and look at the way you use the internet too. Does it need to be so physical? Does that answer your question? Yes, absolutely. I love it. I'm awesome. excited. Anna, I'm so glad that we got to meet you. I'm so glad that you got a chance to talk to Rose Theodora. Um, Thank you, Maria. Thank you, Rose. Good luck with You're everything. Welcome. and um, I really appreciate it. And keep in touch with us. I will. I will. Thank you. All right. We're going to head over to our second guest. Um, so Jeff, our second guest is Veronica Sellers, who's calling in from Pennsylvania. She yeah, is... I Oh, go ahead, Maria. Sorry, oh, sorry. I, I just, I didn't oh. know if you were around. Um, she's a recent college grad who's dealing with the reality of her pre, well, I don't know if we want to say anymore, actually. We'll just let, it. yeah, yeah that's it. I'm going to, I'm going to leave it at that. Veronica, thank Hi. you for joining us. How are you? Good. Thank you. Meet Hello. Rose Theodora. Ask her all Hi. your burning questions. Hi, Veronica. Hi. Hi. Hope you're staying safe and well. Thank Hope you. Mother's Day weekend. It's oh. very nice to have this opportunity to speak with you. It's been an interesting time having graduated um, with the pandemic going on. I, my mindset originally was this is the worst thing that could happen to a college graduate entering the workforce. But um, with spending time by myself and really having the time to really think things over, I have come to see things in a much more positive light that this, things happen. I don't know if I really like to say that, that things happen for a reason, but in a sense, it does. And although my plans have changed, I'm very happy with the way it has happened. And it gives me a bit more time to breathe before this big transition into the full adulthood stage before I really dig deep in my career. So love that. And yeah. and Rose, you have her birth date and her location. What was um have, what what's her sign? The Capricorn. Oh boy, here we go. <laughs> and it's funny because she also she has a Pisces moon. Another guess. I always see when I read people in groups, I always see a common theme. Mm -hmm. So um what's interesting is you know, Veronica, you are so young, like you haven't had your Saturn return yet. And you're so like, even when I'm listening to you talk, she's so Capricorn, because Capricorns are so focused on responsibility, right? And like maturing and coming out into the world. And one big thing you have is you've got two things happening. One is your Jupiter return. And Jupiter is a planet of expansion and growth. And it kind of like makes anything bigger that is already existing. So when we look at it collectively, it could maybe, you know, make the virus bigger, which it already did in March. So 
But for you personally, Jupiter is about being positive. So you were born with Jupiter and Capricorn, which means you don't like to get so crazy with, like you said, like you want to manage being positive. Um, but it really benefits you at this time to think about the future. When, when it is so uncertain, you really do need to think about it related to work. And it will benefit you because dealing with like this crisis is going to help you think about the stability of a job and it's going to make you choose differently. And that's what's so key for you. The other thing that's happening is that we're all born with a natal chart, which is basically like an image of the sky when we're born. And that chart evolves with age. It becomes mature. And so you have what's called your progress moon is changing signs on May 26th. So what that's doing for you right now is giving you a huge boost of positivity, huge boost of learning from experience. Like all the experience you've had is going to help you to grow. And on May 26th, your progress moon is going to change and enter the sign Capricorn. She's sun sign Capricorn. Now she's going to have her progress sun and Cap moon in Capricorn. And what this means, you're all business. You're so business. So do you want to tell us, have you already applied for jobs? So you're, your life's a little bit different than the rest of us right now, because while the, the world is on standstill, I actually see you even getting a job. Um, have you applied for things? What's happening with that? The goal was to <laughs> come back home, graduate, gather things, spend time with family before I back to California. I live in the Valley area. And then everything changed. Um, I have immune compromised. Uh, disease so I have to be very conscientious of being quarantined and making sure that I'm not out and about like some people are applying for jobs trying to go back to work so my plan has completely shifted from looking for a job out in California to now remaining on the east coast for the time being and looking for a paid internship to gather some experience until this dies down a bit my dad works in healthcare and he's very up and down right now, that it wouldn't be safe for me to do. That was very hard for me to accept at first, but the way I see it is, this is what happens as an adult. Um, stuff happens. You kind of have to just conform and work with it and do what you gotta do. And that's how I am seeing it. So now it's about conforming, doing what I can under the circumstances, remaining quarantined where I'm safe, not putting myself or others at risk and going from there and taking it step by step. I have a habit of looking way ahead yeah. and trying to take it step by step and really get in touch with my spiritual self. Something I have, I'm very inconsistent with because of having had school and in internships and applying for jobs, thinking now I really am able to focus on that, which is really important to me. Love it. Maria, when we were just speaking and you said what signs are affected, and I said Capricorns mm -hmm. are always thinking they need to plan, they need to plan, yeah. they need to plan. And hers is specifically related to her work, her daily routine, her health. Like I would imagine you take very good care of yourself, even though you have, I imagine you're very, very yeah. good with your routine. I'm very detail oriented. I try to be, and I'm, I have a calendar. Yes, I'm very meticulous. I have a calendar of what I need to do throughout the day. It tells me just so I'm reminded, try to get things done. And it was hard at first because um, I was kind of depressed at first of what to do. Um, so I was sleeping in longer and it threw my whole schedule off. And I told myself, even if I do little tiny tasks that are even a half hour long, and I get multiple done a day. That could be five half hour tasks that I got done and I'll feel good about them and yeah. making a list of them. I'm very list organized yeah. and I can try and check things off. And it's hard to check things off when you can't go anywhere to do anything. But just trying to come up with creative things or just doing anything spiritual, meditating, stretching, things I could do at home. Right. I think with the post May 26th, when your progressed moon changes, you're going to feel huge relief and you are going to be able to enjoy your life a little bit more. Someone like you who is so meticulous and 
I think who's really hard on themselves emotionally too, you are going to be able to play a little bit, you know, and to, you might have to make time for it because I think that's your style is to actually like carve out time instead of just doing it organically. But I think it's really important for you and for your health right now to just play and actually take time to play. And you're never, I mean, you're not going to have to worry about the job, like the job force at all when you do enter it and you're ready because you were born with your son in the sixth house and Jupiter, like you're just not going to have to worry about that. So play right now, really enjoy life. And that's how you boost your immune too, is by playing, having fun. And yeah, I, I, I think, think that's so, so great, Rose, you. because if you think about <laughs> it, she's young and she's dealing with this immune situation. And because she's so meticulous, you know, it's probably matured you so much, so fast. So you may have missed out on that fun. And maybe that's what this is, how this is going to benefit you. It's going to, you know, push you to try to have a little bit more fun now that you're getting that advice from Rose Theodora. And then that will help your immune system so that when your planets do change, you can go out because you are so meticulous and so detailed, you'll be able to go out in a safe way. So cool. Um, I, have a, I have a question. One more for you. Are you in a relationship? I am. And I, is it stressing you out that you can't see each other right now? Because it, it look for me, that's the one thing that comes up on your chart is super stressful. Okay. Um, at first it was, I'm actually at his house now. The only safe space I can go is between our houses, but it's very, because we did the same program when we were in LA, we did a study away program, um, which was with how I'm here. I met Maria, uh, was through my internship and we did that together, so we've been through all of it together. But at first, when we were separated because we've been together consistently so long, it was extremely stressful. And I had a very hard time. I'm not um, a very independent person. I'm okay. I love my alone time. It was just very difficult being away from him at first. I didn't really know how to feel. So it's funny you say that because recently we just spent about two weeks apart. And it felt good. And I finally felt like I was coming back with myself and it felt very good. So yeah, it was extremely stressful at first, but I finally came to terms and was able to get in touch with myself again. I love how hey. she processes information. It's like, okay, stress and then figuring the way out rather than living in it. Um, Veronica, thank you so much for calling in. We have to get to our last guest, and I know Rose has um, limited time. So our um, third guest is Laura Palmer. Um, do we have her up? I think yeah. we're bringing her in. She's all set. There we oh, see. There's Laura. Hi, Laura. Hello. How are you? Welcome to the show. And Rose, you have her birthday and location, so take it away. I do. Hi. Hi. Okay, how are you? Uh, so you are, you fit under this category we've kind of been talking about of having a lot of Capricorn aspects. You are currently in your, do you, do you have any experience with astrology? No. Okay. We, not okay, a bit. Great. It's okay. <laughs> Um, I'll just be more mindful about how I say things. So Thanks. you are ha you're having a planetary return. So what that means is you're born with uh, planets in a certain location, and okay. the planet Saturn has returned to the place that you were born. And okay. what that does is it is a huge wake up call. It says, okay, excuse me, get your stuff together. <laughs> get, get, the way you're managing money, the way you handle your emotion, is a huge theme for you. So with the pandemic. Um, there's such a focus on financial security and being able to do things yourself and also, you know, processing your emotions in a healthy way, because on a scale, let's say from one to 10, would you say you're very, very sensitive? Um, I would say, yeah, depending on the situation, I feel like I can kind of oscillate between being very sensitive and just kind of plowing right through. Um, to get things done that need to get done. So you're already in that Capricorn mindset. 
Um, you, you do have a Pisces moon too, like our previous guest, which does make you really uh, attuned to the world and very connected to people, very empathic. So okay. whether you're able to express that or not, you would feel other people, but I'm trying to gauge how much of that you, you know, take on from other people versus planning your own life and taking responsibility. So do you want to speak to us about finances or what's going on for you in regards to um, what you're creating in your life? Sure. I think that during, especially during the um, quarantine, I feel like I'm taking the time to kind of, um, you know, take the time at home to really kind of get our act together um, in terms of, you know, how we want to handle our finances, how we want to plan for our future. Um, so I feel like I'm kind of taking um, that time to build stability during a time that feels really unstable. Um, so I think it's one of those things like I'm trying to control what I can because there is so much that you can't control. If that makes sense. Right. Okay. Here's what I'll say. You were born, and you can research this. I encourage you to. Yeah. You were born with the sun opposing Saturn. And having your Saturn return, is it kind of feels, forget about the pandemic. You would be feeling this anyway. It feels depressive. It feels like depressed a little bit. You can be very hard on yourself, but how is your body feeling and everything health-wise? Um, I feel good. I feel like, um, yeah, I, I, I feel not super tense. I feel like you know, especially controlling the things I can helps me to kind of pull down and not be, that makes sense. Yes. Do you want to share anything about your personal life in terms of like your relationship with your father or the, this kind of, are you living with him now or? No, I'm not. So um, I live with my husband in LA. Okay, great. And yeah. what's happening, what's happening with your work specific to finances? Sure. Not, um, not in not in general. Like everyone is kind of dealing with the finances, but you personally, on like a vulnerable level, what is happening in your life? Sure. So, um, work is going actually well for me, which has been an interesting thing to kind of wrestle with because I know that there are a lot of people who are not experiencing that same um, that same sense of job secure not security, but security um, is the right word. Security. Okay. Is the right word. <laughs> Good. Um, yeah, so I think like the idea of having kind of that back and forth of, is it okay to flourish professionally myself when the world at large is maybe not flourishing? Yes, um, and so that's a, a tough thing to battle with to make sure that you're staying empathetic with people, but also still okay to kind of chase your dreams. And it's, okay to, you know, so that's kind of what I've been wrestling with. Um, but things at work are going well. Um, and I've had a little bit of I would say embrace it. Okay. I would say that you're here to work very hard and you outwardly are a very positive person. I think inwardly you, you are very hard on yourself in terms of uh, productivity. You know, like I have to do this and I have to do this. You've got what's called a stellium in Capricorn. So you basically have tons of planets in Capricorn, which is to be very reserved mm -hmm. and to be hard on yourself at times, but you're here to be ambitious. You're born to be ambitious. And if you feel like you're thriving now and, and why not do it? You know, I don't think there should be any guilt with that. You sure. should also know that having a Pisces moon, they are, Pisces can be prone to guilt um, and are very, very sensitive and empathic for the world. So that is the beautiful part of you. Do you want to talk a little bit about what you do? Sure. So I work in entertainment. Um, so I mm. um, am a producer. Uh, with a show out in LA and um, so I'm kind of working, you know, obviously entertainment has been kind of thrown into a loop, but um, I've really kind of been energized and excited by the um, way that we've been able to adapt and kind of be a part of that. Um, so, you know, I think that's part of, of my energetic sense right now is that, you know, we're finding ways to make this weird season work for us, you know? Yeah, great. Yeah. And do you have any questions? Do you want to look at anything specifically? Um, I think I'm just curious about, um, you know, in terms of moving forward, um, something that I struggle with is how can I, um, you know, be ambitious, like you said, and, and not feel that guilt, but also not um, be a steamroller and how I can kind of balance that between, you know, I always struggle with the, the how can you live with kindness, but also know what you're worth. So um, I'm just curious if the chart says anything about that or how you kind of interpret 
It does. The, the steamroller effect, you have Mars conjoined your MC. So what that means is when you were born, Mars is directly above you in the sky okay. at like high noon. When people have Mars in that position, they are a bit of a steamroller, but you have to look at why. Why are you here to be so ambitious? You're here to have that experience in life. You're not a cruel person. You've got that Pisces moon that will keep you very connected and sensitive to people. So mm -hmm. if someone confronts you, you are going to care and you give a lot in relationships. Sure. You also have uh, quite a few, a few planets in Virgo, Venus being one of them. So you do care and give a lot to people. Um, I would say more in terms of education and experience is where giving back would really help you. Okay. Uh, one thing to know about Venus and Virgo is that the more of service you are going to help the guilt and you're going to do a lot of good. So start, I mean, are, are you already passionate about education? I am. Yeah. And okay. especially, I, I, especially listening to the last listener or the uh, last guest who was talking about just graduating, I was like, gosh, that is a tough position to be in. And it made me think, gosh, I want to call my school and talk to recent grads and see, you know, how we can be I, of help and things like I that. Think, I think it's something you should do. Also being a Leo, you do connect with children and education, but I don't think really young children, but you, you should give back. It would help you feel that sense of ease, but I would embrace being a steamroller. I don't think it's destructive. I don't think you're going to hurt anyone. I think it's very beneficial for you. And I think you're here as a human being to have that experience. So yeah. welcome it. Yeah. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. It's you're welcome. Very, it gives me a lot it. of peace and insight. And Maria, thank you for having me. You're welcome. Thank you guys so much. Laura Palmer, um, thank you for joining us. And Rose, thank you as always for an insightful conversation and for gifting our listeners with, uh, with those readings. That's so cool of you. I think people need it right now. Oh, know? yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. So um, I feel like we had like, so many takeaways, but the three takeaways I wrote down were don't use astrology for your relationships, <laughs> right? So, um, go, go deep unless you're willing to go really deep. Yeah. And then use it to know yourself and to heal, um, to study the cycles. And then um, the new year, we're going to transform. Whole massive shift. Be yourself, like really think about why you are a unique individual, what you're here to contribute to the world and really try to be in alignment with that and be mindful about how you consume media and information. There's a huge thing. Love it. And that makes us perfectly positioned for what we're here to do because we started this every day, well, four days a week so that we could be a place where there was positivity and growth spiritually, even physically, not have all of that noise that's out there everywhere. So, And I don't think it's a coincidence that you are a Gemini and he is a Gemini. I forget his name in this moment. Steven. And Steven and Jeff is a Pisces. I mean, that, that makes a 90 degree angle. I think that's interesting. That's positive that you guys are all working together during this time. Was it my rising... Pisces. Pisces. Yeah. That's what I was going to say. <laughs> How funny. Yeah. yeah. Interesting. So his son would sit near your ascendant, which is good for work. It's great. It means he shines a light on the direction of your path. Yeah. Oh, great. I see the light, Jeff, that you lay out. <laughs> I'll Jeff's take it. And I appreciate the positive performance review as well. <laughs> Jeff's worked with us at AfterBuzz for so many years, and he's been an incredible, incredible addition um, over here. And oh, so um, it's been really cool. So Rose, thank you so much for joining us as always. Stay safe and healthy um, and we'll talk soon. And then awesome. for all of you who are watching and listening, thank you so much for joining us as always. If you could um, help us by rating, commenting, subscribing, share the episode with a friend who might enjoy it. Um, and then don't forget to go back into our, um, our library. We have so many amazing episodes with so many amazing guests and experts. Um, tomorrow we're going to have friends. Yes. I mean the show friends, friends, producer and director, Kevin Bright. Uh, we'll talk all things friends, reunions, um, fun stories with the cast, et cetera, et cetera. So if you are a diehard friends fan, you want to listen tomorrow. In the meantime, be a nice person. Oh, I forgot at Maria Menounos at Rose Theodora underscore astrology at Stephen Lemieux photo at Jeff Crane Graham. Got it. 
And remember, be nice people, make good choices, and be present.